In this presentation, we will take a look at the concepts of audit evidence and sampling. In other words, what is audit evidence? How is it used? How is it accumulated? Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. And how is sampling involved within the gathering or the process of gathering? audit evidence. We'll start off with audit evidence. What is audit evidence? It's going to be evidence that helps the auditor evaluate management's financial statement assertions. So you'll recall the process here, of course, being management put together the financial statements. Management is responsible for the financial statements. Management is asserting within the audit, within the engagement of the audit, that they have put together the financial statements in accordance with some set of principles, generally accepted accounting principles, and therefore in accordance with these assertions. Now we want to go in and dig into the evidence to see whether or not they, they have indeed put the financial statements together in accordance with those assertions, how we gather evidence. We call that evidence audit evidence. So yes, it is going to be similar to like a detective. And then we auditors imagine ourselves to be like Sherlock Holmes over here and, you know, collecting audit evidence. So the, remember that the audit evidence, then evidence that helps the auditor evaluate management's financial statement assertions consists of underlying accounting data and any additional information available to the auditor. So what type of audit evidence are we going to look at? Well, we are going to look at the accounting data, of course, that's going to be part of the evidence that we'll look into, but we might have other information that's going to be available to the auditor as well. That information could be uh, generated from the client or it could be originated or generated externally. We'll talk about how to gather the audit evidence and what the value or ranking of that evidence is. Just like if we were having a case and we're putting together a case where Sherlock Holmes we're trying to figure out how valuable this evidence is. There's going to be a lot of information, of course, as there is all the time. There's going to be more information than, than we can deal with. What we need to do is take the relevant information, decide how relevant it is, so that we can then come up with some accurate measure or some kind of, of reasonable process to determine whether or not we have enough evidence to, to say that the assertions have been met or have not been met. As we start to rank then the value of our evidence and what type of evidence we want to spend our time pursuing and what type of evidence possibly is not worth our time pursuing, we will consider things such as where did that evidence come from? Did that evidence come from internal to the company or was that evidence provided by something external to the company? And we'll discuss more of those type of things related to the types of audit evidence in future presentations. Uh, relevance, evidence related to a specific, specific assertion being tested. This is something that seems uh, very obvious, but many people get it wrong. Or in other words, when we think about test questions, this is actually a fairly difficult type of test question because oftentimes we think about different types of evidence. We, we as auditors say, hey, I know I have to do this. I have to do A, B, C, and D. I know I have to gather this evidence. That's what it says in the procedures. I'm looking at my check sheet. That's what I have to do. But if you were to ask them, what exactly is the assertion given all the assertions that we looked at, uh, in, in prior presentation, which exact assertion is it that you're testing for? Oftentimes auditors are not as able to basically uh, ex exactly say what the assertion is that they're testing for. And you need to know that in order to test it well, in order to really do the job up to, up to, up to par, up to what you want to be doing it towards. So when we think about relevance, then what we're thinking about evidence related to a specific assertion being tested. And the specific assertion then is not simply just that are the financial statements in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. That's not a specific assertion. That's the general process you're trying to do overall. A specific assertion would be something like existence. I'm testing for uh, existence. I'm testing for accuracy. I'm testing for whether this is being reported uh, correctly or something like that. Uh, that's going to be specific, not just, well, I'm just testing to see if this is in accordance with GAAP, with generally accepted accounting principles, which is a huge, uh, huge set of of rules that you couldn't create one test for. You need to get into the specifics. 
and then re uh, reliability, evidence that can be relied on to signal the true state of a specific assertion that is tested. So again, some things are going to be more reliable than others. And one of the examples of reliability is, for example, did this information come from internal to the company or external to the company? So if we're testing something like cash, say the classic example would be, well, if we want the financial statement, if we look at cash, and we're trying to check it, we want a reconciliation possibly. And we might want, say, a bank statement. We want to confirm the balance from the bank. Now, they could give us a bank statement internally from the company, but that could have been altered. Not saying it would be, not trying to say that the, the company would alter a bank statement uh, or anything like that, but it possibly could be. It would be more valuable evidence if we got the bank statement directly from the bank, which is one procedure we're often going to do when we test cash. We're going to go to the bank and say, hey, you tell us what independently without talking to the to the company and what's on their financial statements, what the bank balance is at this given point in time. And that's going to be more valuable evidence. So when we think about the evidence, we're going to have to rank it just like Sherlock Holmes does, right? We're going to rank the evidence or a detective does. And we want to see if it's going to be reliable evidence, how reliable is the evidence. And we have to determine what type of evidence we want to spend our time looking into. And we want to spend our time looking into the most reliable evidence that we can. We want to gather really the least amount of evidence that can then test our assertion. We don't want to spend more time that we don't have to be spending doing things that we don't need to be doing. We want to be efficient. And the way to be efficient is to basically value the evidence that we have. Sampling. Auditors examine a subset of the transaction based on previous audits uh, and understanding of the company's internal controls or knowledge of the company's industry. So when we think about sampling, once again, note that when we consider the evidence, there's a lot of data, just like any kind of detective work. There's way too much data. We cannot take in all the data. We can't basically test all the data most of the time. Therefore, we're really reliant on sampling, especially if we're talking about large companies. The larger the company is, the more it's going to be impossible for us to test all the data. Not only that, but we can't do substantive testing. We're going to have to rely more on internal controls oftentimes. We're, have to, we're actually going to have to rely on the system, just like we do for the government. The checks and balances of the system, we as citizens are reliant on those checks and balances to stay in place. Uh, and keep people in check. The same thing is basically true with the large companies as well. We need the internal controls. We need to test whether the internal controls aren't not only are put together, but have been put in place, are actually being used in a process and test whether those internal controls are in place. And that's gonna be part of basically our sampling process. To do that, we'll do some type of sampling. We're gonna base that sampling based on our understanding of the company possibly based on prior audits that's going to have some impact on the sampling we're going to have our sampling it's going to be based on uh, our knowledge of the company and of course the industry so different types of industries will will dictate in terms of what type of things are going to be more important to some industries or or the other and the point of the sample is of course for us to make an accurate decision with less information you can think of it as the same kind of process you might see in some type of polling situation where Possibly you have some type of political poll and you want to say what people think about a certain person or what they're going to vote on or something like that. Of course, you're not going to call everybody in the country in order to do that. You have to do some type of sampling and you could do statistical sampling to limit the amount of calls that you need to do and still get an accurate sample that hopefully will be representative of the entire population. Now, there's different ways that that can happen, different sampling types of methods that can be used given the different objectives that are in place. So we'll talk about different sampling methods later as we get into the, the sampling process. So examining every transaction would not be cost effective. That's, of course, the bottom line. You just can't do it. All the evidence can't be done. We couldn't ask everybody in the country, you know, who they're going to vote for. That would be ridiculous. But we can get some pretty f accurate numbers using sampling. And if we use statistical sampling and we use different types of method that are going to be applicable towards the type of uh, assertions that we're looking for, we can be much, much more efficient in terms of exactly what type of sampling we need, what type of testing we need to do in order to get to the level of assurance that we need to get to for our auditing process.